we're back. It is week three of our series about faith. Faith has been the key word, and what is faith? Hopefully, you guys have been uh, catching that. We've been saying it every week. Faith is trusting what we can't see because of what we can see. And we've been unpacking that uh, through all these weeks. But before we keep going down that path, we need to get up. We need to get ready to get, you know, get our moves on, our dance moves. I want to see all of them. Look, I can pretend like I can dance, but I can't really dance. But that's okay. We are so excited, friends. Stand up and let's get ready for some worship.
Alright, it is time for our memory verse. We have been having different people joining us to share the memory verse. So get ready because you guessed it, we got somebody brand new coming on to share our memory verse with us this week. Hello Cottonwood Kids, it's Miss Melinda here and I have a memory verse for you. It comes from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says, faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Let's say it all together now. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Be sure to keep repeating this verse and memorize it for digital Bible books. Goodbye, friends. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 9. Verses 10 through 31. Ananias, a believer in the city of Damascus, paced the floor of his room. What will we do, Lord? Several days before, the Jesus followers in Damascus had received terrible news. Saul of Tarsus is on his way. He has permission from the high priest to arrest anyone who follows the way of Jesus and take them to Jerusalem. Ananias shivered as he stared at his door. Why haven't we heard anything yet? He knew that at any moment, guards could knock on his door. A voice could shout out his name. Ananias. <sighs> Ananias had nearly jumped out of his skin. And then he quickly realized that the voice hadn't come from outside. Um, it hadn't come from inside either. There was only one person it could be. Yes? Lord? Yep, Ananias knew this was a vision from God. So he took a deep breath 
and waited for what the Lord had to say. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. <gasps> Ananias gasped in shock. God wanted him to seek out his enemy? Saul is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man come and place his hands on him so he could see again. That man's name is Ananias. Ah, a million thoughts tumbled through Ananias' head. At last, he found his voice. I've heard many reports about this man. They say he has done great harm to your people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to arrest all those who worship you. It must have seemed like a home run argument to Ananias, but God responded. Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. Uh, I, well, okay, here goes. So Ananias grabbed his cloak and hurried through the dusty city. But as he finally reached Straight Street, his steps slowed. He forced himself to breathe evenly as he approached the home of Judas. Help me, Jesus. Give me the words to say. Ananias stood in front of the door for a long moment, gathering courage. Then he knocked. Boom, boom, boom. What do you want? Ananias shared his vision. As Judas led Ananias through the house, Judas explained, Saul won't eat or drink anything, not since they led him here three days ago. Ananias peered into the back room. A man was kneeling there, his hands knotted in prayer. And even though the man's eyes were open, they didn't focus on anything. Who's there? Before he could lose his nerve, Ananias went straight to Saul and put his hands on Saul's shoulders. Brother Saul, you saw the Lord Jesus. He appeared to you on the road as you were coming here. He has sent me so that you will be able to see again. You will be filled with the Holy Spirit. As Saul blinked in surprise, something like scales dropped from his eyes. I, I, my eyes, I can see. Saul leapt to his feet and faced Ananias. I need to be baptized this instant. Now Saul, also known as Paul, had always been relentless in his quest to wipe out the believers. But now that he himself had met Jesus, he was equally determined to share the good news. Within days, he started preaching at Jewish synagogues. Jesus is the Son of God. Isn't Saul the man who caused great trouble in Jerusalem for those who worship Jesus? Hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners? Though Saul now believed in Jesus, he still had much to learn, and he wanted to discover all the answers himself with God's help. So he spent several years studying the scriptures, and after that time, he came back teaching and preaching about Jesus as fiery as ever. Jesus is the Messiah. He fulfills every promise in scripture. The Jews in Damascus and even the governor of the city uh, were angry at all the um, upset Saul was causing. Time for him to uh, sleep with the fishes, shall we say? They made plans to capture and kill Saul, but Saul and his friends discovered the plot. It appears they've even guarded the gates. That leaves the windows. Saul's friends led him to a home built into the city wall. When it was dark, they brought out a large basket. You gotta be kidding me. You really wanna try the gates? Saul stepped into the container and his friends lowered him out the window and down the wall on a rope. Never thought I'd end up as a basket case. <sighs> Once safely out of Damascus, Saul set out for Jerusalem. Home sweet home. When he arrived in Jerusalem, Saul immediately tried to join the group of believers there, but they were afraid of him at first. One man, Barnabas, had already heard Saul's story. Cheer up, man. I know you're the real deal. Let me take you to the apostles. So Barnabas did exactly as he promised. He took Saul to Peter and James and the other leaders of the early church and told them the whole story. So Saul stayed with the believers in Jerusalem and preached there just as boldly as he'd done in Damascus. And once again, a group of Jews became upset with him. Someone send that man to sleep with the fishes. 
But once again, the believers helped Saul escape. This time he went back to his hometown of Tarsus to wait for God's next directions. In the meantime, the group of believers in Judea and Samaria continued to grow through the power of God's Spirit. I love the story of Saul. See, it's a story of, of change. It's a story of God working in somebody's life that nobody probably thought was gonna change. See, Saul was putting the Christians in jail and they were afraid. And as a matter of fact, Paul's reputation got there before he even got there. They knew he was coming before he was even there and they were already afraid knowing that he was coming. Ananias is there and God tells him to go and visit Saul. Can you imagine how much faith Ananias must have had to have in God in order to go to a person that was putting Christians in jail? But nonetheless, he went and he prayed for him. And this is the start of Paul's journey as he begins to preach the gospel all over the place. And the early church has a hard time with it. It's hard to believe that a man that was just throwing everybody in jail now wants to be there and do the same thing they were doing that was getting them thrown in jail by him. But as we see, they rally around him and they help him. And there's one person that has great courage, and it's Barnabas. While everybody's looking and wondering if this is true, Barnabas stands up and stands up for Paul and says, hey, look, I've seen what he's doing. He's doing great things in the name of God. And we need to bring him on. We need to be friends with him. And it changes everything. Now, think about your life. There might be people in our life that we think they're too rude, too unkind, too mean to ever change. But think about this story about Saul. If God could change Saul's life, he could change anyone's life. See, God is bigger and more powerful than anything. And it's easy to make our decisions when we're making them in fear. But you don't have to be fearful because God is with you. Remember this story when you're fearful and remember that God is with you and he can help you through any difficult situation you face, friends. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, that the Bible is filled with stories like this, Father, that can help encourage us to love those around us, Father. We just pray right now, Father, that you would take fear from our hearts, Father, and fill it with your boldness and your courage, Lord God, to help us face any situations that we may in our life, Lord. We thank you for who you are and what you've done for us, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen, friends. We're so happy to have you. Come back next week. We're going to have another church service for you. Have a great week. Catch you later.